I first talk about Carter, Elliot Carter, because he was a composer who I knew personally very well. We were wonderful friends. Uh, he was, of course, a huge influence on me. I also compose, and as a composer, he's an influence on me. And uh, this piece I've conducted many times, and it's a wonderful exercise in the sonority of winds. Um, it was an experiment where he has 24 winds, and the idea of it is to have basically one dynamic. And this dynamic should hold whether it's just the bass flute playing alone, or it's the whole group of 24 instruments. And what you hear when you actually achieve this, more or less, is different densities of sound. He wrote it in 2008, uh, just before his 100th birthday. Yes. Uh, the next piece is the Symphonies of Winds by Stravinsky. And uh, I have uh, an interesting relationship with that piece as well, simply because of my relationship with Robert Kraft. Robert Kraft, of course, was uh, Stravinsky's personal secretary and helper uh, from the late 1940s through all of Stravinsky's life. And he met Stravinsky through the Symphonies of Wind. So Robert Kraft restored the original version, and while he was restoring, he was actually in contact with me. We would, we would be together, and, and he showed me different stages of this uh, restoration. So I do have, in a sense, a, a personal uh, relationship with this version, you can say. Uh, this, the Symphonies of Winds is a remarkable piece, he uses, uh, I should say, Stravinsky uses symphonies in its original meaning as groups of instruments. And you have groups of winds, and they play together and separately. And uh, it's also interesting because it was the first piece where Stravinsky actually uses what is called metric modulations and, and specifies them. That's right after the comma. is by Richard Strauss. It's his huge E-flat uh, sonatina for winds. Uh, it's called From a Happy Workshop. And after Strauss's death, Boozy and Hawks, because of its mammoth uh, size, retitled it the Symphony for Winds. Um, Strauss began this piece in 1944 and finished it after the end of the Second World War. Uh, at the end of his life, as the world was shattered by the Second World War, he took solace, I could say, in his very early music. Went back to that uh, in a certain way of saying that, well, okay, then we had civilization, then we had, we had uh, civility. It's a very, very challenging piece for winds because of its length and also because everybody's playing all the time. Uh, Strauss 
I guess he, he was very afraid to have any blank space on the page. So he was always filling it with extra voices, et cetera, et cetera. And that creates a big challenge in terms of uh, balance in the group. And this actually makes it a wonderful piece for students who are learning to play together because they have to learn sometimes to come out, sometimes to come way back, and to blend with uh, different instruments on the other side of the group, et cetera, et cetera. 